It's Marie from Still Dreaming Homestead. As always, I'm so glad to be back with you. And tonight, we get to read in a new book of My Bible Friends. We're already on book nine. So today's story is going to be Daniel and his friends. Oh, let's see what I see here. We'll look at it together. Daniel and his friends. It was noontime in the city of Jerusalem. The temple school for boys had been dismissed. Daniel and his three special friends were hurrying home to lunch when suddenly the trumpet sounded. Day, 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 sound the trumpet. It was the noontime call to prayer, three times a day, morning, noon, and night, a priest came out on the temple porch and blew a ram's horn trumpet or trumpet. Tayi, tayi. It's time for prayers. Daniel turned about face toward the temple. His friends turned about face towards the temple. All the people of Jerusalem stopped whatever they were doing and faced towards the temple. With heads bowed, they prayed to God. Temple was a place where they believed, I believe, the presence of God was. That's why they turned that direction. At home, Daniel's mother served pulse for lunch. Pulse is a food like beans and vegetables, brown bread, berries and dates. Daniel liked pulse. Pulse would make him grow tall. Pulse would make him grow strong. Pulse would make him get good grades in school. Daniel and his three friends and all the people of Jerusalem felt safe in their city. For hadn't the city a high stone wall around it? And were not strong gates on the wall with a watchtower above each gate? Where watchmen kept watch day and night? If Daniel listened, he could hear the watchman call, First watch, all is well, and later, second watch, all is well, third watch, all is well. See, there's the watchman right there. He could see a long ways away because that was a very high wall. But one day, all was not well. The watchman hurried out of the watchtower, blew a warning blast on his trumpet and shouted, An enemy approaches! Quickly, the gates were shut and barred. They put bars across it so they couldn't break in. Nobody could break in like the enemy. Men mounted city walls. They climbed up city walls. Boys climbed rooftops far away, so far that Soldiers and camels look like a line of creeping, crawling bugs. Came the dreaded army, the feared army of Babylon. Closer and closer, closer the army came. I think I see them. There they are in the distance. The Babylon army was known to be especially cruel. The army of Babylon pitched their camp near Jerusalem. The soldiers 
built great battering ram machines and pushed them up beside the walls. Crash, crash, crash. All day long, the battering rams beat and battered the walls of Jerusalem. Crash, crash, crash. Finally, after many days, a part of the high stone wall gave away. Carefully, you can see where part of it's giving away. There, and here's the other place that is. And it, can you see how that machine would just keep pounding that wall over and over and over till it would break it down? The army of Babylon marched into Jerusalem. Some of the soldiers climbed the hill to the temple and took away the temple's golden vessels. As the king of Babylon had commanded them to do, some soldiers stood guard while other soldiers took men and boys prisoners. They took Daniel and his three friends. See, they were taking golden containers. And they were taking even the prisoners, Daniel and his friends. The army marched the prisoners towards Babylon. Soldiers on camels led the way. Then came the prisoners, chained together. Next, donkeys bearing the golden vessels, then more soldiers, for days and days, the procession marched across the hot, sandy desert. Daniel's sandals wore out. His friend's sandals wore out, and the hot sand burned their feet. They were thirsty, and they were tired. But on and on, they had to march until they got to Babylon. There they are. They've got a long way to go. You can see the camels. And then the prisoners, on and on. The king of Babylon sat on his royal throne while soldiers paraded the prisoners before him. Said the king to the captain of the army, Choose boys from among the prisoners, goodly boys. Give them food from my table to eat and give them my wine to drink. They shall go to school for three years and learn of the wisdom of Babylon. Daniel and his three friends were chosen. Prince Melzar was given charge over the boys. There's the king. He wants those boys to be well taken care of for a special reason his finest foods, what he thinks is finest foods, and a good education. That evening, Daniel and his friends talked together. We cannot eat the king's food, said Daniel. It's been offered to idols. And besides, the king's food is not the best food for boys. Neither can we drink the king's wine. So, Lots of the foods that the king would eat that he thought were very special were considered unclean foods according to the Bible, like pork, which comes from pigs. The Bible says that's not clean, not healthy for us to eat. And shellfish that come from the ocean. If it's in the water, it's supposed to have fins and tails. So there were many things that they couldn't eat. What shall we do? The boys asked one another. Then Daniel thought of a plan. Let's talk to Melzar. Let's ask Melzar to give us pulse to eat. Remember, that's made of beans and vegetables and fruits and water to drink instead of the king's food and wine. 
That's a good plan, said his friends. Can you see some of those foods that lots of people would think those were very delicious foods? But the boys knew it was not for them. Daniel and his friends went to see Prince Melzar. They bowed politely, then asked for pulse and water instead of the king's food and wine. Melzar shook his head no. If the king should see you are looking thinner than the other boys and learn that I had given you pulse and water, he might, he might even cut off my head for disobeying him. Please, try us for ten days, begged Daniel. So Melzar agreed to give them pulse and water for ten days. Then we shall see, he said. Then we shall see. See, they were very respectful. And they reasoned with him. Although Daniel and his friends were far from home, and there was no sound of the ram's horn trumpet going, uh, what was the sound? Dai, dai. To remind them, they did not forget to pray. Morning, noon, and night, Daniel opened his window towards the temple back in Jerusalem. He knew the direction and prayed to the God of heaven. He asked God to bless the pulse and water to and to please make them strong so that Melzar might know that pulse and water were better for boys than food and wine. By doing this, he showed he was faithful to God. When the ten days had passed, Prince Melzar called all the boys before him. He looked at their faces, and he felt their arms. He found that Daniel and his friends were fairer and fatter, and that was a good thing back then, than the boys who ate the king's food and drank the king's wine. So, ever after, during the three years of school, Melzar gave Daniel and his friends pulse to eat and water to drink. It was a very healthy food, and God answered their prayers. One, two, three years went by. School was over for Daniel and his friends. They grew taller. Had they grown wiser? The king himself would test them. That's the king that would test them. Daniel and his friends, dressed in clean clothes with hair combed and sandals polished, and they stood before the king of Babylon. The king asked them question after question, and lo, the king found Daniel and his three friends ten times wiser than all the wise men in Babylon. Ten times wiser. That is very, very wise. And lots of those wise men were much older and it had more time to learn than the boys had. They'd only had the three years. So God was answering prayer there. And that's the end of this story for the night. I hope you liked it. And I want to be faithful to God. I want to do what he asked me to do. And I will ask him for his blessing. And I know he'll give it to me. And if you ask for your for blessings, he'll give it to you too. I want to be strong 
and you want to be wise, but you want to be faithful. All right, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I want to pray blessings on you and yours in your house, out of your house, in the day and in the night. And whatever you do, keep dreaming. Good night.